Yo, what's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. I'm feeling real, real nice. Shall we not waste any time? Let's get into it. But before that, I want to say hello. Uh, thanks for continuing watching my videos and um, tweeting at me and, you know, everything on Instagram and YouTube, like commenting and, you know, just keep on watching my videos and stuff like that in it. And like talking to me, keeping the line of communication open. Um, thanks, guys. It means a lot. And that's why I'm continually doing this. So we're about to break down um, Devil May Cry 5 the trailer for Gamescom 2018 and it's more of the same of what we saw at E3 that's literally all it is it's the same thing that we saw at E3 but with more details about the system about the weapons um, not really too much about the world actually so it's actually less story in this type of um, presentation for the game and more about the system Let's do this thing. All right, so let's start. All right, yeah, man, I'm feeling it. A bloody phone box. And the buttons are actually moving. That's like a proper phone in the UK. Oh, no, no, that's like an American phone. You're up, Nico. I love this. You know I got you covered, asshole. <laughs> Trying to get us killed on the way there. Trying not to get us killed on the way there. Yeah, Nero. I actually like Nero. I don't fucking believe it. Exceed. Yeah, that looks so fucking amazing, man. And Nico's actually in battle as well. That's amazing. And that's rank time. The one way to stop time. Basically, you'll freeze time with those spears. And this looks like Sin Scissors from Devil May Cry 1. You remember Devil May Cry 1? Dante thought against Sin Scissors that came out of the picture. When he got his shotgun. That's what the enemy looks like. Sick. Did he do parties? He's got personality! He's got fucking character, man! Yeah, like, see this? That is basically like a special. Like, yeah, that, that arm that, that Devil Break he's got is called um, Buster. A buster arm basically and it's it's essentially just a replication of his um grab moves from his devil arm in devil may cry 4 and that one basically is gerbera like you see when he reflected something that is the gerbera ability and this look this buster arm so buster arm looks like it's basically a grab um devil arm this is so sick Migration is getting bigger. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, I did. <laughs> he looks like he's fucking having fun. I'm fucking having fun if he's having fun. And then he was, you saw he was like surfing on um, Punchline. That's like the rocket arm. Um, um, Devil Breaker. Perfect timing. So, perfect timing. He looks like he's having fucking fun. Yeah, the devil. The devil. Look at the bike. Listen to the bike. Even the bike even sounds violent. Listen to it. 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 it actually sounds disgusting. Look at the smile. Ooh. Oh. Man, that makes me so fucking happy, man. I'm like sweating and shit. Oh, man. That means everything, dude. That fucking means everything. Man, you see Dante's face, the smile? Just that little smirk on his face. It's magic. Oh. Yeah, man, I'm really happy with that game, man. Like, the game actually looks so good. Um, graphically, it looks incredible. I mean, when it, for the video first came out, I thought like the graphics had been downgraded, if I'm honest with you. But when I watched the video, I watched the video so immediately after it was uploaded that it didn't actually finish upscaling basically so when i watched it i watched it in like 10 720p basically but then 
after a couple hours, basically the 4K version became available and I watched it and the graphics are actually even more increased, dude. It's incredible. So uh, basically, yeah, what we're gonna do is we are gonna talk about some of the stuff in the game, yeah? Um, just breaking down that trailer. So what we learned in that game was basically that he's got like these devil breakers, yeah? His metal prosthetic arm, yeah? And the um, one that we've seen a lot is Overture. Yeah, so you see, we've got some like, gameplay there going on. You like that, yeah? I know, I like to do. Basically, Overchunk, which is basically, it looks like that's electric attacks. And it's more like a kind of like defense, powerful push away kind of like attack that just basically creates space, basically. And um, he's got another one called Gerbra. And Gerbra is the one where you see him like shooting, and it looks like he's like fucking. Um, it's like the attack is like pushing him away, but it's more like an attack. And an evasive maneuver at the same time, basically. And that one's Gerbra. And basically, what it does is if you charge it, basically, um, to maximum, he's got like they've all got like supers. I think Overture's one where he slams the floor, and you see like a massive electric current on the floor. And then the Gerbra is an attack where he does like a massive laser, basically, when he's on the floor. It looks like a like a fucking Shinku Hadouken from uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, basically where he just goes like, like that, it looks fucking incredible. And he's got another one where he jumps in the air and he does like all these kind of like mad lasers, basically and it like bounces off the, all over the place, like the nightmare weapon that, Death May, that Dante had in Devil May Cry 1. And then you have another one called Ragtime, yeah, and Ragtime is basically a, what is Ragtime? Right time is the time stop ability where he does that in the trailer and you see that it kind of like went grey and like the area was like frozen in time, right? And then he's got like the normal version that he does where it's like creates like spears basically where the enemy is like slowed down and stuff like that. Then he's got another devil breaker called um punchline and that one is like a rocket punch basically and uh, so he does like a powerful rocket punch attack and then he can surf on it. Basically, that like what you saw when he was fighting against that enemy that was doing like the the bullet hell, and it was like surfing through the bullet hell, which is fucking incredible. Basically, uh, so basically that was where he's got like a rocket punch arm, and it's just like I think it's just like just power. That's what I think. I think that attack is just pure power, and basically can surf on it. Uh, we haven't seen the super that it's got. Uh, essentially, that one is punchline, and then the other one he's got is Buster arm, and Buster arm looks like. It actually looks a little bit like his devil arm from Devil May Cry 4. Basically, and that one just looks like it's just basically designed to be a grapple. Like it's a grapple move. Because you saw, even in the trailer, he did like a power bomb, basically, on the enemy. Um, when he was fighting against um, Goliath, the boss, uh, basically, you saw him do like some mad combo attack into like a charged up kick, basically. So I think when the end bosses are stunned, and you have the Buster arm equipped. He basically does like a special throw, basically exclusively from them. So you saw one way he did that. Another way he grabbed the tail and threw it into the um, into like the church or whatever building. And then he was like, "Bang, man! I just can't believe it!" Like Nero. I like Nero. Like I've like never liked that character. It just goes to show you, man, that. When you make a character fun, that's literally, it seems to me like the main thing that they've done with Nero is they've made him more fun. That's literally all it is. He's having a good time. Look, if the main character is having a good time, I'm having a fucking good time. My problem with Devil May Cry 4 was I found it boring. I actually was bored of Devil May Cry 4. Playing the game made me sleepy very 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 bored playing that game now when i'm looking at the game this trailer's got to be the most fun i've ever had actually watching a trailer it's unbelievable unbelievable yeah and there's some things i want to talk about actually about the devil breakers so what it is yeah um so what i've been reading and what the people have been saying um they say that the devil breakers basically you, i think you've got maybe Three slots or four slots? I don't know. Because some trailer um, videos I've seen, there's only three slots. Somewhere there's only eight slots where you can carry eight arms. Now, I think 
basically that means that you can have basically maybe two Gerbera, um, you could maybe have two Gerbera, three Overchar, and another two um, Ragtime, and then one Buster Arm or something like that, yeah? I think maybe something along those lines, or you could have maybe seven Buster Arms and one Gerbera, right? So I don't know how it works, or whether you can only have one. No, you must be able to have more than one of each. Yeah, but essentially, when one breaks, then the other one just swaps switches in. And what I did notice was basically, if you listen to it, when he does, when one arm breaks, or he switches to the other arm, he actually says the name of it. He actually goes like Overture, Gobra, Ragtime. You know, he actually says the name. That is fucking godlike. The game is amazing, right? But basically, what they say is, and um, essentially, the game will basically the arms, the Devil Breakers will break if you get hit during an attack. So say when he does that, basically with the Overture, he does like the palm move. Yeah, if he gets hit during it, the arm will break. Bam, instantly. Yeah, um, and then if you do like the super, it will break. And then also, there is a self destruct ability within the actual Devil Breaker where it just self destructs just to do like massive damage in an instant. Those are the ways that the arm can break. Other than that, I literally think that the arms will break um, after an extended period of usage. Yeah, and it does make sense basically because essentially what they're saying in the arm breaking is. Because the power, the devil power is so powerful and you're fighting against demons, yeah, materials, they, they, they're very delicate, basically, against those enemies, right? So there's only a certain amount of um, usage you can get out of the devil of, which is fair, because these are demons we're talking about. Because if it was that easy, then you would easily just have, like, the army um, or the forces create, like, a... A suit basically that would just be able to fight demons right so the fact that they have to keep on reusing different devil breakers and then they break after a period of time I think that's fair basically after a period of time I think that's fair and I think the buster arm basically because that's the at the moment that's like the closest one that re um, replicates the power of the devil arm from Devil May Cry 4 that one's got to be the most fragile like you do one attack on a boss like a throw and it's it's done it's like used up that's what i reckon like the devil breaker ability does yeah i think that it would just use it up um i'm playing monster hunter in it so that's what it's all doing uh, so basically that's what i think they were doing that yeah and then also what i've noticed is in battles you have um like the music like the music plays depending on how you play and the name actually, the name of the ranking actually appears. And you see like kind of like a, like an equalizer around the um, the rankings, which is fucking godlike. So basically, if you're playing, yeah, the music starts off like, like normal Devil May Cry music. Uh, and then as you're going up, dismal, crazy, badass, apocalypse, savage, six skills and then i think it's um sexy um smoking sexy style basically um as you get up to that rank then the, that's when the music is um bang 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 on my devil trigger like that's when like the music is like properly kicks in and then if your rank drops down then the music will drop down basically to the The bang, bang, bang on my devil trigger. Like all that kind of like, you know what I mean? Like the music will like really kick in. Yeah, and that's godlike. And you actually hear as well as you're ranking up, like you're fighting, and then you get dismal, and then you're playing, then it goes crazy. Like you actually hear the commentator or whatever saying the dismal, crazy, badass, apocalyptic, savage, six skills. Them smoking sexy style. Yeah, you actually hear basically the game saying it. Man, the game just looks fucking godlike, man. You know what I mean? And I also what I did notice was like the that wire, like the wire thing that comes out of the um 
the stuff bit of his arm. Basically, essentially, that is, you don't need to have a Devil Breaker equipped for that ability to work. But I think if you do like a Breaker attack, while his arm is not there, he will do like a special sword attack. Because I've noticed um, in, the, in the trailer, there were some things where he did like a grapple attack and then he would do something like a dive kick or something like that. And that only happened when he didn't have a, he was all out of devil breakers. So that's literally what I think it is, but I think you only get one move of the sword, like a special sword ability, which devil breakers are obviously better. You know, uh, so yeah, man, like the trailer is just fucking amazing, you know. And then I like the film with like Nico, right? And they did confirm um, that Nico is um, Goldstein's granddaughter, like that's confirmed basically. But they still haven't confirmed, although it's obvious at this point, they actually haven't. But I think it's story, I'm not gonna say it, it's for story. The reason they haven't stated it is for story, same thing, like it's obvious that it's Virgil. Right, they haven't actually come out and said it's Virgil, right? Because there's a lot of story, which I want. I want there to be proper story in the game. Because if there's Devil May Cry is synonymous for anything, it's lack of story, you know? Uh, Devil May Cry 3 had a really good story though. Devil May Cry 1 had a fantastic premise. And, but the continuous story from chapter to chapter wasn't really there but the premise of it the actual overall story was really good you know and um, Devil May Cry 2 you know no comment you know Devil May Cry 3 best story Devil May Cry 4 pretty meaningless to me if I'm being absolutely honest so I hope that this is the game where they could just do a godlike story just a proper wholesome full story where Dante um, Nero and the new main character I don't fucking know his name so I'm not gonna even guess what his name is you know I've seen a pop online where they say his name is V or whatever but I don't know that so I want to see a confirmation of what his name is then we'll go from there right so yeah that is just that's all I really wanted to say about the game man you know because I'm like really excited I'm really really happy basically about the game um, you see like Nero having fun, popping off, basically, against the bosses that he's fighting. And that's what I want to fucking hear, man. Do you know what I mean? Because that makes you feel fucking happy and excited to fight against the boss. You know, because Devil May Cry bosses are not easy. Well, it does depend on how you play them. When I play a Devil May Cry game, I go straight to hard difficulty immediately. Um, and the next thing I do straight away is I go into Dante Must Die mode. Right, so bosses are never easy. They're like a proper, um, it's a proper um, trial of adaptation and learning. Because you have to understand what the boss is going to do. Because there's stages of a boss fight, right? And then you have to understand what the enemy's going to do, when he's going to do it, and how to evade, nullify, or overwhelm the attack that he's going to do or just get out of the way right so you have to learn certain um, audio cues and visual cues and just know the fight in general and basically some of that stuff it can be a little bit like intimidating for a lack of a better term but when you see the main character popping off saying what you the king of the underworld uh, nah, I don't think so, man. I mean, you'd make a good court jester for a king, but I don't know about being a king. Nah, negative on that one. You know, he does like that thing, and he goes, and then Nero goes, oh, do, do you do parties? Like a clown. Like, are you up for being hired for um, like kids' parties and stuff like that? Like the banter, the dialogue that Nero was got. Where was that? Like, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say, well, where was that in Devil May Cry 4? No. In that time, in that era, that type of thing was kind of like dying out, basically. But we we experienced an era in video gaming where they were trying to be too realistic and too cool. And then we lost that. But now I feel like anime 
has basically rejuvenated that. Anime has shown us that people actually love this stuff still. That the fact that anime is so popular in 2018. Yeah. But that element of realism is still there. So this is kind of Devil May Cry is like a marriage of of like anime and over the top crazy and realistic life. So it's relatable. So it's relatable in terms of it looks realistic, but it's still anime in terms of that is mad. You know, like the fact like basically when Goliath drops the um, ambulance on on Nero, Nero sees it coming, and then basically he just like turns his body, the, the thing drops on him, and he just basically must jump in there, maneuver while it's spinning around, sit in the seat, it lands, and he kicks the door up and says, someone call for a doctor. That's Devil May Cry, yeah? Where the skill is so maximum, absolute, maximum human that he's just godlike that's devil may cry man the crazy nutty over the top beautiful you know what i mean like and then when it comes to the boss like even though the boss is like a proper powerful intimidating boss you know you're like oh, i'm gonna fuck you up bro I'm gonna mess you up proper. You know, even though you're fighting against a big boss that you've never fought before, you know that this guy has got the skills to do it. He's got the tools, and now it's only up to you, basically, to execute it because the character you're playing with has got the skill, but you have to execute it. So the capability is within your hands. So it's basically, oh, you don't know who you fucking with, boy. Let's get it. You're about to get it. You know, that's why I'm excited. And the fact that I actually like Nero, it's mad to me. And I, the only thing that looks to me like it's changed is the fact that, well, he looks different. That's not even the same character from Devil May Cry 4 to this game. It's not even the same character. I don't care what anyone says. Right? But the biggest thing for me is his attitude. That's the difference. His attitude is completely different. Although his voice does sound the same, so I don't know if it's the same voice actor, but the voice does sound the same, so I'm going to assume it is the same voice actor, but whatever. You know, like just a bit like when he calls Nero, um, sorry, Nico, basically, Nico Goldstein, to come and basically any phone box he gets to, calls her up, and she drives the vehicle there. Man, that's cool. That's cool, and that's where he can upgrade his um, weapons, his guns. Cutscenes must take place inside of that. You know, I actually I want to see the dynamic between um, Nico and Nero. I want to see. I want to see the banter. I like the the banter. Sounds like it's going to be so cool, man. Like when she calls her, she says, "You know, I got you, asshole." <laughs> I love that shit. And then they're driving and he goes, try not to kill us on the way there. That is that that's the banter where they're basically pretty much like family that the banter is is frivolous talk. Like when um like do you remember Bleach Soul Society, how the captains used to talk to each other? Yeah, it's basically like that. They're like a team, a family, but you know what I mean? It's like you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. But the bond between fat, uh, friend uh, or comrade or brother sister in arms is so it's so strong basically that they might as well be your family and so you could talk to them in a certain way without fear that they're going to be they're going to hate you or not like you or whatever it's almost like a brother sister relationship but it's the bond that they pick because that's his um i mean for lack of a better term as well it is his weaponsmith yeah and he pays her for her work that's basically it but there's more to it than that you know because goldstein is the one that made um everything ivory for dante the guns that fight infinite bullets which is obviously powered by dante's devil ability but still the gun has got the ability to tap into dante's power to create infinite bullets and the devil breaker is harnessing the power of Nero's devil ability that's within him to create crazy abilities. 
you know. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about this the game, man. It looks visually incredible. The system looks unbelievable, like fan. Fantastic. I like the callbacks to Devil May Cry 1 and um, with like the Sin Scissors boss enemy that you saw in the game You know and we know how to fight. We know how to fight that enemy already Yeah, you have to break the mask. You have to the attacks on the mask is what actually does damage or Parrying the attack when it's about to sl um, scissor cut you you hit the extra sword and it it stuns Sin Scissors and then you hit the the, the mask, like you could, I remember Devil May Cry, you could do one hits on that enemy. Basically, when she's about to like uh, cut you, you just press the attack button and it parries her and then you sh jump shotgun, shotgun in her face and it just kills her in one hit. I've, I've, if you don't fight her properly, that fight's gonna take you a long time. And that was what's cool about Devil May Cry. If you know the fights, they can be bloody easy, but it takes a high level mastery to achieve that once you've reached that level of, of mastery you can finish boss fights like that that's when you can push it to the absolute limit and just do fuckery but then if you fight it normally without knowing the weaknesses and the nuances of the boss a boss fight can become very very long and quite hard right and that's what Death May Cry is it's a test of, well, pretty much most Capcom games are a test of skill and um, adaptation and implementation. That's basically what Devil May Cry is. It's just that this game is just bloody fun, man. You know, bloody uh, phone boxes all over the world. And then you call Nico and she comes up. I got you, asshole. And you go in there and it's like she's in there. And it's like a cutscene and... Um, my brilliant badass work is worth every dime and you know it. I love that. I, lo I think that character's cool. Nico, love her. Love that character, man. So, um, yeah, dude. That's really all I wanted to say about the Devil May Cry um, 5 trailer, man, for Gamescom. It just looks fantastic. I'm excited about the game. Uh, look, man, they've already said that you can pre-order the game, which is all good. Yeah, the game comes out, um, I think it's the 8th of March, 2019. I think it's, I think that's right. Right. Um, I'm going to pre-order it. But I'm going to wait until they announce a collector's edition. If they announce a collector's edition, I'll get that. I don't care the price. I will pay whatever price they issue for the collector's edition. I don't give a damn. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with that. And, um, yeah. Um, that's that's pretty much everything, you know. I think we covered everything. Talking about it, I mean, there is the obvious stuff with like, um, what is it, the Red Queen, um, the Red Queen, and the fact it's got the exceed system. When you're slashing, you press the um, trigger buttons at a particular time to rev it up. Basically, then you can unleash it. And then Blue Rose, pretty much the same thing, except no, Blue Rose is a little bit different because the Blue Rose has basically got different load types so you can load different type of bullets where it fires up bullets like you fire it constantly or you fire bullets where a lot of bullets come out at once or another one where the bullet comes out like two bullets come up per shot so it's kind of got like normal um gun fire then it's got like shotgun air uh, fire then it's kind of got like machine gun fire you know, so it's kind of like a Matilda handgun, a normal handgun, and a shotgun, basically, uh, functionality. So those are things that look different, uh, basically, with the Red Queen and the Blue Rose. But other than that, it pretty much is the same thing. Like, even the attack combos look the same as they did in Devil May Cry 4, basically. Uh, but of course, there's more. And it's tough, like when you're looking on the internet for like Devil May Cry videos, because they do have a lot of um, Devil May Cry videos um, of people playing the game, the demo. But um, they're not very good. Like the gameplay is not very good. And the interviews are. The questions are not very good. I'll say that much. Like, if I was to be talking to those people, like the developers for. Um, Capcom, like Hideaki Isano. I got so many questions for that guy. 
I've got so many questions I'd ask that guy. I like those. In, so the interview, all the interviews that I've seen for him, the people that interview him clearly don't know and don't actually care about Devil May Cry. You can clearly see it based off their questions. You know, they don't even say nothing about the obvious at the ending of the trailer. You know, I don't know, man. Fine. There are some interviews that are good. You know, like um, IGN. Basically, the um, video where um, Hideaki was talking to the guy. That guy was actually saying some accurate stuff and asking some good questions. But everything else, like the Xbox One, was garbage. They didn't even know what they were talking about. They didn't even know what they were seeing. So the interview wasn't that great. I wanted to hear so much from those guys. And the time that they have is so small that... There's not enough information. I need more information. I want to know more about this game, you know. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, we're going to get Tokyo Game Show in um, September, you know. Um, like, between the mid and the end of August. I think it's like the 20th or the 20... Between the 20th and the 23rd, something like that, is when Tokyo Game Show is. And that's when they're going to show The Boy, Tay. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm not talking about Dante, basically, so if you're wondering why I've not brought up Dante at all, because I don't want to talk about Dante. That man gets his own video. He gets his own time. That's what Dante is. Even though his section was literally, what, 30 seconds, if even that. He gets his own video for that. Just for those 30 seconds, he gets his own video. He's the me. He's the main star. That's the number one guy. I was about to call him a dude, but he's not a dude. He's a man. Yeah? He's like the number one man. Demon hunter. He's pretty much a demon. He's like a demon lord right now. Like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait that thing. So, yeah. Game is godlike. I'm excited. Um, if there's anything that I've missed, basically, please talk to me. Let me know in the comment section. I want to hear what you guys feel and think about Devil May Cry uh, 5, the Gamescom trailer, the gameplay that's been going on. Did I miss anything? Are there any little nuances that I've missed from this trailer? Talk to me, guys. Let me know. Art Warriors, I'm going to be doing a Dante video next, so stay tuned. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and um, liking, and... Everything like that on like Facebook, Instagram, uh, retweet, Twitter, all that type of good stuff. Uh, thank you. It just helps me know that you guys are still there. You're watching my stuff and you're interested to hear my views. And it makes me to, it motivates me to keep doing this stuff. You know, because look, I could be doing something different right now. But I want to interact with you, the people. I want to share how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling. And um, yeah, it manifests, it manifests itself for this you know i mean i'll give you an example um the reason it's important because i say something i see something you see the same thing but the way you interpret it is totally different so we've got this right here yeah now you see the same thing i see a character a maid a, a girl in a maid outfit with blue hair but everybody's cognition is different. Everybody's perception is totally different. The way our eyesight is different. So the way we perceive and see colours is different. Our interpretation of what a maid is. Or what a maid outfit is. Or something like, where's a maid outfit? It's totally different. Right? So the way we see it is what we're seeing the same thing. But our perception and our, our perception is different. And our cognition is is allowing us to interpret it in a totally different way and that's the reason we have discussions we have an opinion we have different opinions right and that's the reason that i'm happy basically about um talking to you guys about devil may cry hearing what you guys think and feel about devil may cry you know because we have different standpoints different views different um interpretations of um what we're seeing so um yeah sorry um notification on twitter
so yeah, I've been quite active on Twitter, basically. Um, so I've been getting a lot of notifications and stuff like that. So sorry if I seem a little bit distracted. Uh, so yeah, Warriors, thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be about Dante. And I'm going to be talking about um, Soul Calibur, basically. Soul Calibur, the new one. I don't know if it's five or six, whatever. Basically, I'm going to be talking about that. And um, yeah, we're going to go from there. So Warriors, stay blessed, take care, stay tuned. And... Um, Catch you on the other side. Later.